Hello, I'm Connell Campbell, a coal mine methane analyst at Ember. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to outline how the European Union is taking action on reducing coal mine methane emissions. During COP26 in Glasgow last November, we highlighted that the short-term climate impact of coal mine methane is larger than the EU's entire CO2 emissions. At the same conference, over 100 countries, representing over 70% of the global economy, signed up to the Global Methane Pledge, thus promising to cut methane emissions by at least 30% by the year 2030. In December, the European Commission proposed new legislation on methane and the coal sector is in focus. After years of getting less attention than oil and gas, even though coal is approximately as methane intensive as those other fossil fuels, the EU is proposing action along three main themes. The first strategy proposed to tackle coal mine methane is measurement, reporting and verification. This applies to both operational and abandoned coal mines, because unfortunately, after mines have stopped working, they can keep emitting methane. The EU is going to build an inventory of all closed mines. Coal mining companies will have to take responsibility for their closed mines, and if this proves impossible, member states will be held accountable. This means that even mines which are no longer producing revenue will be responsible for any pollution they continue to emit. The second theme is mitigation of methane at operating mines. Here the EU proposes a ban on venting and flaring from draining stations at coal mines from 2025, unless in case of an emergency, a malfunction, or where unavoidable. This is very notable, since unabated venting and flaring of methane from draining stations as a routine practice is careless behaviour when you consider that this gas could be used. Methane is the only pollutant that can be used as a fuel, and it's vital that Europe and the rest of the world take this possibility to prevent such a harmful greenhouse gas from escaping into the atmosphere. The last theme is imports. This is certainly a weakness of the EU's proposal. The provisions don't apply the same standards to coal imports. This means that, for example, hard coal mined in Russia and potentially with worse methane output, won't be put on the same path to monitoring, reporting and verification as coal mined in Poland. The EU is already promising to improve its action on methane emissions of imported coal, and it will be important to see how the Methane Transparency Database and the Methane Emitters Global Monitoring Tool described in the proposal develop, including their use of satellite monitoring technology. We'll be tracking how this proposal comes through the EU's lengthy political process. This means that the European Union's two largest emitters, the Polish companies of PGG and JSW, need to radically transform their methane management practices. Overall, we at Ember see this proposed legislation as an example of climate leadership by the European Union. Our hope is that action from the European Union can provide a useful framework for other regions. The best way to prevent coal mine methane emissions is to leave coal in the ground, or to at least dig it out of less gassy mines. But while coal is being phased out, it's great to see additional action being taken to tackle methane.